Preface Long-term financing of industrial and infrastructure project is often referred as project finance. The finances are not based on the balance sheets of their sponsors. Instead, it is based on the flows of cash of that particular project. Various parties are involved in project finance. A number of equity investors are involved. They are known as sponsors, too. A bank or other leading agencies also needs to get involved in order to lend financial support or simply loan for various operations. Often, these kinds of loans are non-recourse loan. Non-recourse loan cannot be paid with general assets or trustworthiness of the project sponsors. These loans are secured and paid with the cash flow of the project only. This method is supported by standard model of finance. Revenue producing contracts and all projects assets are used to secure the finances. A lien of the assets is provided to project lenders. Lenders are given privileges and given to the lenders to take control of the project if the related company is facing difficulties or not complying with various terms of the loan. In order to shield other assets of project sponsors to save themselves from determinal effects or project failures, special purpose entities are created for almost every project. Special purpose entity indicates that there are no assets owned by the related company other than those in the project. Financial soundness of the project is assured by capital contribution commitment of the owners. Such commitments also ensure the commitment of leaders towards the sponsors. Project finance method is comparatively complex than other alternative financing methods. This method is widely used in the area of mining, transport and communications projects. Project finance is nowadays highly growing in the field of sports and entertainment also. Identifying risks and allocating them efficiently is important aspect of project finance. There are various risks involved in a project such as technical risks, environmental and economic risks and political risks as well. These risks are even noticeable in developing countries and newly emerging markets. These risks are considered unacceptable or unfinanceable by most of the financial institutions and project sponsors. Various delivery methods are implemented in project finance in order to avoid or decrease these risks. These methods are nothing by various implementation patterns of the project in order to manipulate outputs. According to methods, if risks are a little bit higher, the financing of that project is distributed between more than single parties that can be any number more than one. It will make it sure that both the risk and profit are distributed among several parties equally and in less amount. Introduction History of this field is limited, being not too long stretched. It is found that limited resource lending was used in ancient Greece and Rome. They used this limited resource lending in order to financially support maritime voyages. It was also used for infrastructure projects that can even date back to when Panama Canal was being constructed. In early 20th century, this financial method was largely used in oil and gas industry in United States. North Sea oil fields were underwent high end development, especially in 1970s and 80s. This development eventually triggered the establishment of high risk infrastructure schemes in the field of project finance. Before these developments, such high-risk projects were achieved by implementing utility and government bond issuances. Other than that, traditional corporate structures of finance were also implemented for such unique high-end and high-risk projects in that era. The era of Asian financial crisis led to the peak of development in the field of project financing. However, it is noticeable that downturn in industrialising countries was negatively affected by growth of OECD countries. Worldwide project financing peak has achieved due to these effects in around the end of 2000. With the global development, more and more countries began to require additional supply for their public utilities and developing infrastructure. These increasing demands maintain the requirement of project financing to high level. In close past times in Middle East countries, these project finance schemes are now common. Most of these countries from Middle East are incorporated with Islamic finance. 
long-term opportunities were presented in long-term power purchase contracts. These opportunities triggered emergence of new patterns and structures for project financing. Most of these long-term power purchase contracts were offered through governmental utilities and entities. Various set of rules were applied on these long-term contracts, such as PERPA and some other governmental rule sets. These policies applied by multiple governments eventually lead the electric generation to be deregulated. This sequence of events was followed by privatization of several financing units and other units at international level, which was then followed by establishment of Public Utilities Holding Company Act that was formed in the year of 1994. A clear indication of a lot of ups and downs in the industry was seen in ending period of late 20th century. The structure of project financing has evolved a lot in this short era of development. Financial bases of multiple energy and other high-end projects are not formed by this structure around the globe in multiple big and small countries. We will be beginning this book by learning about various parties and basic agreements involved in the process of project finance. Following chapter would be describing the same. Chapter 1. Parties and Agreements for getting started with project finance, first we would learn about various participants of the process or term. There, there are various parties and agreements involved in the procedure with their unique roles. Let us begin with various parties involved in the process. Parties Depending on the scale of the project, there are a number of parties that get involved of project financing. In this chapter, we will discuss some most common of them regardless considering any scale of the project. As described before, complex transactions are involved in project finance. A number of parties are involved in these transactions with unique relations among each other. Due to the complexity, these parties and relationship among them is not very same for very project financing models. Here is a list along with a description of some most common parties involved. First, Project Company. It is a legal entity that is responsible for developing, owning, constructing, operating and maintaining the project. In most common examples, Project Company is a SPV that is Special Purpose Vehicle. This SPV is generally created in the country by which project is going to be hosted. Therefore, all the laws of that country are enforced over the projects. However, some exceptions for the project can be acquired by paying some commissions to some important governmental officials. There are two most common and probably possible ways through which a project company is created. Best candidate is selected by government by soliciting bids and choosing the best bidder to form a project company. By ignoring the possible investment of the host government, a single company or a group of companies can initiate the creation of project company on their own. However, the first method is popular since most project handlers want governments to get involved for initial support and for avoiding any possible law and governmental issues. The established SPV is then controlled by their respective equity owners. Second, Sponsors The role and responsibilities of equity investors or owners of project company can be served by both single parties and consortiums. They involve following. There are industrial sponsors involved. These sponsors consider the initiatives as a part of their core business. Public sponsors, including central and local governments, municipalities and municipalized companies. Main goal of these investors is social welfare cause. Contractors and sponsors. Contractors are responsible for developing, building and running plants. They provide equity and subordinate debt for initiative. There are several purely financial investors involved too. They do not involve in any activities other than financial flow. Third, leaders. Leaders are generally one or more commercial banks. They can also be multilateral agencies, export credit agencies or bondholders. These are not the actual managers of the projects. However, they are the main supportive entities in the process of handling the finance project. Fourth, host governments. 
it is the government of the country by which project is being hosted. In simple words, the government of the country in which the project is located serves as the host government. It is mainly involved in processes related to law and other governmental documentations. It acts as issuer for various permits and licenses. It also authorizes the project in various terms. Government involves in providing concessions and tax and makes for an exchange available for business. Fifth, off-taker. These types of parties are involved mostly in utilities related to industrial, gas and petrochemical projects. These parties are involved to assure some or full purchase of products delivered by the project. Sixth, suppliers. Raw materials and other inputs essential for project are required from these suppliers in exchange of cash payments. Seventh, contractors. Contractors are responsible for multiple operations related to project company. They act very similar to outsourcers. Contractors are also responsible for designing and building project company and handling the project operations. EPC, Engineering, Procurement and Construction, and O&M, Operation and Maintenance, Contracts, and O&M Contracts, Operation and Maintenance, are often used to handle various operations of project company. Contracts and agreements. Various agreements and deeds are formed among some of these parties according to their unique identity and role being played by them. Here is some description of some most common agreements and contract documentation related to project finance. First, shareholders agreement. Respective rights and obligations of the sponsors are stated in shareholders agreement. These rights are states with respect to each shareholder or sponsor and project company itself. A strict dividend policy is followed while preparing such agreement. These agreements help resolving any possible potential conflicts of interests. This agreement is given major attention where private sector sponsors and host government of the country are equity holders. Second, loan agreements. It is a credit agreement that is also legal documentation between banks and project company. It describes all the terms according to which funds are advanced to the project company by a bank. All the associated security documentation is also a part of this agreement. Here are some issues concerned in load agreements and various parties. Currency of the loan amount. Managing the drawdown. Requirements for the reporting according to project company. Requirement of control amount to reflect local legal requirements. Third, off-take agreements. These agreements help to manage revenue risk involved between host government and project company. To do so, a sufficient predetermined revenue stream is provided to project company. Project obligations, operations, costs and sponsor returns are ensured with these agreements. Most of these agreements are prepared in form of take-to-pay agreements. According to these agreements, off-takers are allowed either to take product or pay for the product according to tariff regardless if the product was taken or not. These agreements have become common in gas and electricity generating projects. In these kinds of projects, sales are not made on spot or at retail market. Fourth, construction agreement. This agreement is made between the construction company and project company. It is usually in the form of comprehensive turnkey agreement. This agreement ensures that a functioning and complete facility will be delivered to project company by constructor. The turnkey model ensures that all the project requirements are satisfied by a delivered facility and it is ready to perform state. It decreases various risks related to contractors for sponsors. Fifth, supply agreement. These agreements are made between suppliers of various materials and project company. Sensitivity of these agreements varies according to the raw material and fuel that are essential for the project. Source and ownership of supplied materials also leave impact on the sensitivity of these documents. For any project, security and price of the supply are important. 
pricing our adjustments. Terms are also important since they help to maintain off-take agreement and maintain the project's revenue and debt servicing capacity as well. Sixth, O and M agreements. They stand for Operating and Maintenance Agreement. It is signed between the project company and facility operator. These agreements aim to provide security towards providing security from various operational risks related with facility and also make sure that appropriate performance is delivered by the operator that is required to achieve maximum or expected revenue from the project. 7. Project Agreement This agreement is made between the host, government and project company itself. Various attributes of this agreement are greatly dependent on involvement of the host government in the project. Following are two major cases of these agreements. First case is that in which host government agrees to be an off-taker. By doing so, it agrees to purchase all the output or some part of total output of the project. This kind of case is common when output of project is a service such as oil, mining or energy projects. Second case is that in which host government agrees on a concession agreement with project company. In such case, collecting toll from users of the project is allowed. However, any kind of payment to or by the government is not involved in such case. Chapter 2. Stages of Project Finance According to Project Finance, Project development is considered a process in which a capital-intensive project is financed and prepared ready for commercial operations. There are various stages in this process that starts from project originations continued with negotiating project agreements. The process ends as finance and commissioning of facility are mobilised. For a major project, the whole process can take from one year to several years from successful completion. Lack of experience and perfect policies causes project development in emerging markets comparatively delayed and time-consuming. As per World Bank estimation, developed economies and transactions costs are usually 3 to 5 percent of total cost of any average financing infrastructure projects. The process of project finance is divided into following stages. First, pre-bid stage. Second, Contract negotiation stage. Third, money raising stage. Here is descriptive information regarding to all these stages and various actions performing during these stages. First, pre-bid stage. A conditional right from seeding authority pursuant is secured by sponsors of the project or the project company in order to tender the further process and also to unsolicited proposal in order to build the facility. Bidding process A call of proposals from interested bidders from private sector is issued by authority that resides in the host country itself. Such proposals are issued according to a well-defined procedure in order to assure the right of building and operating a facility possessing certain infrastructure. Technical assistance and financing is provided by multilateral banks such as World Bank and Asian Development Bank. According to these banks, a tightly defined tendering process should be used known as International Competitive Bidding and often denoted as ICB. According to ICB procedure, bids are evaluated and awarded on the basis of ground rules that were set at the beginning of the process and followed throughout the whole process of tendering. The only throwback of this process is that it can take six months or sometimes longer to complete. Compared to contract amount, the costs spent behind preparing the bids can be prohibitively large. For instance, when bidding on small water utilities that are compatible to supply only a few thousand customers will never justify the transaction costs. Feasibility study These technical studies are conducted in order to take in concern the design of the facility. It is verified if the facility's design is matched with required services, capacity, facing and costs also. Projected market conditions of various sites are also taken in concern. Other aspects required to be considered are construction schedule, price and availability of transportation and essential inputs as well.
according to several researchers, these studies have margin of errors somewhere around 30%. However, this ratio can be even bigger for projects with more complexity. Second, contract negotiation stage. In this stage, technical, economic and commercial outline of the project is formed by project participants by negotiating and formalizing various agreements. While documenting provisions related to risks, risks are completely removed from main vehicle body of the project and placed or allocated to such a body that is better compatible to observe it. In project development, sponsors are not allowed to check out financial markets until the stage of contract negotiation is successfully completed. Once the process is complete, the sponsor develops sophisticated and accurate models. These models represent feasibility in economical and financial manner. These models represent these aspects under scenarios based on a number of assumptions. Project Agreements the structure of the project vehicle is formed by the sponsors. They keep in mind that this structure is properly designed in order to insulate the project from risks and liabilities. Site purchase and lease agreements are some common examples. Here are some more examples. EPC contract, engineering, procurement, construction. O&M agreement, operation and maintenance agreement. Input supply contract. Some documentation is enforced by central government and related agencies in specific countries having emerging markets. Documents described above are executed with the help of appropriate service providers from private sector in general. Sponsors' credit is buttressed in way or another by each counterparty involved in project agreement. In such situation, it is important for counterparties to be creditworthy in their own unique right. Securing revenue. Marketability of the output will be the primary aspect for economical and financial viability if project is successfully completed within schedule and budget. When off-take agreement is not present, sponsor is free to conduct a market study to compare projected demand and predetermined life of the project. Under multiple economic assumptions, this study should confirm that project output will be sufficient to cover the predicted demand at a rate that will help covering up all the production costs, service debts and leave acceptable revenue for equity investors. In such studies, projects with single products and variable price have massive drawback. Mining is a great example of such projects. These projects are much likely to face major and quick changes in demand. Such entities require developing a hedge against price risk involved with a product. Environmental and Social Impact Assessment Finalization and documentation for publicly disclosing environmental and social effects assessment is done by sponsor. Generally, environmental standards alongside with social standards of multilateral banks exceed easily the banks from host country. World Bank is a great example of such bank. Financial model. A financial model is developed in order to represent the provisions made according to the project agreements. Accurate assumptions regarding to financing costs are sometimes involved too. Various factors such as projected levels of distribution, pace and timing of projected distributions, acceptability of the project, internal rate of return, etc. are some concerns of the developer. Third. Money Rising Stage This stage begins when all the agreements related to project are initiated. Successfully building and commissioning the facility is considered the end of the money rising stage. Required financing is mobilized by sponsors and is the main activity at this stage in project finance. Besides, that management organization, construction and commissioning of the facility, etc. processes are also supervised by sponsors in this stage. It should be noticed that sponsor remains responsible for all the development costs until this stage leads the procedure to financial closing. Source of Finance Almost every possible private debt source, both in capital and credit markets, are available in industrialized countries theoretically for the projects. Such financing sources are often found in countries that are developing at investment grade. 
Installation, supply, erection and commissioning of the facility are sponsored by long-term lenders. These lenders invest a number of years during various facility operations that are predetermined in previous agreements. Construction and commissioning of the facility are supported by short-term lenders. However, later they are taken out by previous long-term lenders. Financeability with respect to debt service obligations provided by lenders, they demand a margin of safety. For assuring such safety, enough cash flow is required in the entity. Following are some aspects or concerns in perspective of both long- and short-term lenders. Projection of the revenue, expenses for various operations and debt services and distributions should be consistent according project agreements. Estimated revenues of the project should be sufficient in order to cover most of the operating expenses. These revenues should also be high enough to provide reasonable safety margin towards most of project debts. Debt Sculpting Short-term financing for construction is provided by sponsor. As the commissioning process of the facility continues, long-term financings are partly arranged. These arrangements are made on the basis of contractual arguments. These arguments are present in sale of the output acquired through project. Various debt funds require matching the maturity for the predetermined plans of financing a project. These estimations are raised according to ability of the project of generating cash. This cash is meant to repay most of the project funds. Aggregate cost of financing can be reduced thanks to such matching. Debt-to-equity ratio Quasi-equity investors or outside equity investors are required to be arranged. This might be very well depended on maximum value that can be acquired by feasible debt-equity ratio. These arrangements are also based on ability of the sponsors for contributing project equity. Third-party equity or subordinate debts are required in order to complement the equity of sponsors. These debts are generally invested in financing plan since the cost of them is generally lower than threshold return requirement of the sponsor. Moreover, financial plan is continued by reducing third-party equity, quasi-equity and weighted average costs of all these funds. Construction The sponsors are responsible for triggering the construction. They do not do it until they secure the financing. Draws of the loan commitments are matched with the schedule of expenditure made in construction process once the construction process is triggered. Warehouse of excess funds are reduced due to such schedule matching of expenditures. Bridge financing is also a result of that. Chapter 3 Contractual Framework There are four main types in which documentation for any typical project finance can be done. Documentation for shareholder or sponsors, documentation for project, documentation financing, documents of other projects. Here is a list of several concepts related to contractual framework of standard project finance. First, engineering, procurement and construction contract. EPC Engineering, Procurement and Construction Contract is the most common construction contract in project finance. Obligation of the contractor is acquired through this contract in order to get the project facilities built and delivered on turnkey basis. There is some complexity involved with EPC contracts with some legal issues too. Thus, both the project company and EPC contractors require enough knowledge and experience with the nature of the project. Experience is the best tool to avoid any risks and legal issues while the contract is being executed. Following is a list of most common content found in a standard EPC contract. Project description, price, payment, completion date, guarantee of completion, liquidated damages, guarantee of performance and liquidated damages, cap under liquidated damages. Second, operation and maintenance agreement. Agreement formed between project company and operator is known as Operation and Maintenance o &M, Agreement. Operations are delegated by project company to a reputable operator. 
sometimes maintenance and performance management are delegated to under this agreement. These operators are expertise group of professional in the industry. It is noticeable that either a third-party operator or sponsors of the project can be assigned as an operator. In some rare cases, operation and maintenance of the company can be carried by a project company itself with arranged assistance of other company under technical assistance agreement. Following is a list of basic contents found in O&M contracts. Service definition, responsibility of the operation, provisions regarding the services rendered, liquidated damages, provisions regarding to fees. Third, Concession Deed Concession Deed Agreement is the agreement formed between public sector entity, most often the contracting authority, and project company. Use of government assets is conceded to the project company through this agreement for a limited period of time. Land plot or river crossing are great examples of such government properties. Concession deed is essential in projects with noticeable government involvement that are mainly infrastructure projects. This agreement can be signed by national or regional government, municipality, special purpose entity that is set up by the state in order to grant concession to the project company. Following are some simple examples of this contract. Transportation systems such as railway or metro in which fares would be paid by the consumers to a private company. Utility projects in which municipality or end users are responsible for making the payment. Ports and airports where airlines and shipping companies are one to pay bills. Fourth, Shareholders Agreement. SHA, Shareholders Agreement, is an agreement between sponsors of the project. A special purpose company, SPC, is formed through this agreement in relation to the development of the project. In a project finance transaction, this is considered the most basic structure hold by the sponsors of the project. This agreement is made between sponsors in order to deal with followings. Share capital injection, requirements for voting, force one resolution, dividend policy, management of the SPC, Disposal and preemption rights. Fifth, off take agreement. Agreement signed between the project company and the off taker. As described in previous chapters, off takers are those buying the product or service that is delivered or produced by the project. Rather than selling it on merchant basis, revenue is commonly contracted in a project financing. Mechanism of price and volume are governed by this agreement in order to make up the revenue. This agreement is meant to supply enough revenue for the project company in order to over their debt obligations, operating cost and for providing return to the sponsors as well. Following are some examples. Take or pay contract. Power purchase agreement. Take and pay contract. Contract for long-term sales. Hedging contract. Contracts of Differences Throughput Contract Sixth Supply Agreement Agreement made between the project company and the supplier of the feedstock and fuel is essential for various project operations. If the project company already has formed a take-off contract, supply agreement is formed by matching with it in various aspects such as length of the contract, force measure, provisions and so on. Both the volumes of required supply and estimated output are linked through this agreement. Following are some important supply agreements. Fixed or variable supply. In this agreement, a schedule is agreed on which supplier agrees to deliver a fixed quantity of supplies or variable quantity between agreed maximum and minimum value. Such supplies are usually undertake or take and pay schemes. Output or reserve dedication. The entire output of a specific source is dedicated by the supplier to the project. Various mines or own plants of the supplier are great examples of such supply sources. However, supply is not allowed to have any obligation for producing an output unless it is described in the agreement. Such supplies can also be undertake or pay or take and pay scheme. Interruptible Supply 
Various supplies such as gas can be offered as a low-cost interruptible basis. Usually, gas is supplies through pipelines that serves to multiple users simultaneously. Tolling contract. In such contract, supplier is not committed to supply at all. In fact, the supplier can decide not to deliver the supplies in the project and deliver it elsewhere if it is more profitable. However, the supplier requires paying availability charges to the project company. Seventh, loan agreement. Agreement made between the lenders of the project and project company is known as loan agreement. Relations of the lenders and borrowers are governed by loan agreement. Loan agreement also determines the basis according to which the process of drawing loan and repaying it might be performed. Provisions of these agreements are much similar to those in corporate loan agreements. Additional causes in order to cover project documentation requirements are also included in a project finance loan agreement. Following is a list of basic terms of loan agreements. Precedent for general conditions. Condition precedent regarding to each drawdown. Availability period. It is the period during which borrower has obligation of paying commitment fee. Drawdown mechanics. Interest clause. It is charged with a margin based on base rate. Repayment clause. Financial covenants. Restrictions on dividend. Representations and warranties. Clause of illegality. Eighth. Intercreditor agreement. Agreement between main creditors of the project and project company is known as intercreditor agreement. This agreement describes the connection of relation of main creditors with project financing. Main creditors are involved in this agreement in order to govern the common terms and also the relationships that exist among the lenders and borrowers. Here is a list of provisions included in the agreement. Common terms, drawdown order, cash flow waterfall, Restrictions on ability of creditors in order to make variations in their rights. Voting rights. Default notifications. Order of recovering the debts. Mezzanine funding component, if any. Ninth, tripartite deed. A direct relationship is required by financiers between them and the counterparty. A contract is established with these counterparties that can be achieved through using tripartite deed. It is also known as consent deed, direct, agre direct agreement and side agreement. Circumstances are set out in these deed that step in under the project contracts. Following provisions are included in this contract. Security acknowledgement. Notice of default. Step-in rights. Receivership. Sales of assets. Tenth. Common terms agreements. This agreement is made between the several financing parties and project company. Terms described in this agreement are common for all financing instruments and various relationships between them including definitions, conditions, order of drawdowns, project accounts, voting powers and amendments, etc. Multi-sourcing finance for a project are clarified and simplified under this agreement. It also ensures a common understanding of key definitions and critical events for parties described within its body. 11th. Terms Sheet This agreement is made between borrower and lender regarding to cost, provisions and repaying the debts. Key terms and conditions of the financing are outlined in the agreement of term sheet. Base is provided by term sheet for lead arrangers in order to complete the credit approval which needs to be fulfilled in order to underwrite the debt which is usually done by signing such terms sheet. Term sheet is usually attaché with a mandate letter. It is mainly used by lead arrangers in order to syndicating the debt. Chapter 4. Basic Scheme to understand the basic scheme of the project finance, let us take Acme Coal Company as example. This corporation imports coal for satisfying their requirements. Energy is supplied by Energen Incorporated to their consumers. To their consumers. An arrangement is made between these two different companies of building a power plant in order to satisfy their individual yet related goals. 
at the very beginning of the process, a memorandum of understanding would be signed between these two companies in order to set their intentions clear for both the parties. This step would be followed by an agreement for forming joint venture. A MU special purpose corporation would be formed by Acme Coal and Energine, let us call it Power Holding Incorporated. Shares of power holdings would be divided between these two companies according to their contributions in the newly established SPC. Let us assume that Acme Coal is a well-established company so it contributes more than other company and takes almost 70% of the total shares. On the other hand, Energin is a new or small company which contributes less and takes remaining 30% of shares. At this point, there are no assets owned by the new company. A construction contract is then signed by Power Holdings with Acme Construction in order to build a power plant. Here, Acme Construction is affiliate of Acme Co. It is the only company that known how a power plant can be constructed according to the deliver specification of Acme Co. Hundreds of millions of dollars are required to build a power plant. Financing is received by power holding from development bank and a commercial bank in order to pay Acme Constructions. Acme Constructions financier is assured by these banks that power holdings are capable of paying to them on the completion of the construction. Following payment method is followed for the payment. 10% as the construction begins, 10% in midway of the construction, 10% just before the completion of construction, 70% as the title is transferred to Power Holdings, which is now the legal owner of the power plant. Another special purpose corporation is formed by Acme Coal and Energine in order to manage the newly built facility, let's call it Power Manage Incorporated. Now, we have two SPCs named Power Manage and Power Holding, serving the ultimate purpose of protecting Acme Coal and Energine. Wondering how? If any disaster occurs with the plant, assets of the original companies would be safe since neither they own the plant nor neither is it operated by them. A sale and purchase agreement is signed between Power Manage and Acme Coal since it supplied raw material for the operations of the plant. A wholesale delivery contract is also signed with Energine in order to supply the plant with energy. These transactions will include cash flow of both Energine and Acme Coal which would be later used in order to repay financiers. This example, almost this full chapter, might very well help you to understand basic scheme of project financing. Conclusion Project finance is comparatively broad term since it includes various sub-theories within it. Since it is a practically applied in commercial world, it makes it even broader. When we apply any theory practically, there are hundreds of possible variations. This book, however, covers the basic knowledge of the process only. We have described the theory as a process, which it really is, which makes it even easy to understand all the concepts clearly.